You know, so Nancy, markets on uh, around the world reacted so strongly on Friday of something that was already sort of in the air, but suddenly there's governments reacting to it with travel restrictions, et cetera. Um, as much as the markets may have overdone it, is it possible that uh, the reaction from the virology community is maybe just a little bit overdone as well? Some vaccination people who resist it or people who want, don't want to get them feel that there is a move on to kind of scare people. And so I don't think it's so much scaring people. I, I think we've all learned from what happened with Delta that um, that we didn't act fast enough for Delta and that delaying Delta and Delta spread across the world would have allowed us to better understand Delta and how to protect ourselves against it. So um, the there was concerning information coming from South Africa and I, that's why the WHO acted quite quickly. And I think that that's a reasonable uh, and prudent thing to do um, because you always want to be cautious in the face of uncertainty when you're dealing with, you know, potentially, a, you know, a very deadly virus. Um, now, I, I don't think people should panic. I think it's really important that, that we're cautious, but that we don't panic. This is not going to send us back to March of 2020. That's not what we're looking at. We've advanced a long way. No one thinks that, or there's no one that I've heard that thinks that the vaccines are going to have no effect on Omicron. We just don't know how how much the effect may be attenuated. So, um, so you know, that, that remains to be seen, but no one's thinking the effect will be zero. The question would be how much it reduces the effect effective vaccines, if any, and does it reduce it enough that we need a new booster specific for that of the new variant? So when you look at Delta, it does reduce the effectiveness of vaccines by a little bit, but not enough that we needed a new booster that was specific for Delta. The other thing we don't know for sure is how transmissible uh, this is. It does seem there are, there are indications in South Africa that it, it is more transmissible, but um, you know the, the rate of, of mm -hmm. Delta cases in South Africa is really low, so we don't know whether it outcompetes Delta yet. So uh, when it comes to vaccines, does this, there's a lot of uh, concern now about the vac vaccinated people in the U.S. who are still transmitting the virus. Um, they're still getting it. So it, it's, it's another reason why people say, what's going on here? What's, what's really happening? And, and so how should we view the, the, what vaccines are or are not going to do for us, especially when there's another variant that authorities, health authorities are already saying they're wondering if it's going to work on this new variant. Well, well, certainly for the for the for the let's talk about the COVID we know. So for the COVID we know, we, we we know that the vaccines are very effective, particularly against dying or getting severe illness, not as effective as as preventing any infection or transmission, although it works for that too. But what it seems to be is a third dose actually improves all of that. So it's it makes the vaccine even more effective against severe illness or death but it really makes it more effective against transmission. So I think, um, you know, it's, it, it is important that, that we think about boosters, we think about boosters for the whole population, and perhaps even think about boosters sooner to get the maximum immunity for, for, for um, you know, populations, for countries, to face a new variant that might be more transmissible. I think that's really important. Um, transmission is, is is important, particularly when you have, you know, quite a few people who are unvaccinated, because, you know, if, if if the COVID circulates amongst the vaccinated people, you know, it's just going to be more of a problem for the unvaccinated. They're going to be more likely to encounter it, but also for breakthroughs. So for people who have more, are more at risk because of their immune systems, if there's more COVID around, then they're more likely to get sick and ill, even if they've been vaccinated, if they're more at risk of that. So it means that controlling cases and controlling transmission actually is important, even with the old, old Older variants, but mm -hmm. with the new variant, I think we have to have it be as protected as possible when we go into this. Nancy, when you take a look at South Africa, a vaccination rate of 27%, across the broader African continent, 7% fully vaccinated. Is this a wake up call if we hadn't had one already that, uh, you know, developed countries and vaccine makers need to think about vaccine equality? Absolutely. So, you know, it's often said that um, none of us are safe until all of us are safe. And I think that that's very true. It's not just the supply. It's also there is some vaccine hesitancy in some of these countries and also a delivery problem. Like these vaccines need to be kept cold, cold chain. So it becomes very challenging to deliver them in these settings. Um, but I, one thing I want to say is um, 
a huge thank you to the scientists and the public health officials in South Africa for making sure we were aware of this variant as quickly as possible, even though that came uh, at, a, at a risk to them in terms of, you know, travel bans. Um, so I would say that, you know, the rest of the world needs to do whatever we can do to support South Africa in trying to manage this outbreak of this variant, because they really have done us a huge service by, by making sure we were alerted to this as quickly as possible. The communication piece is so big in this, isn't it? So Dr. Yes. Fauci says it'll be a couple of weeks, maybe longer, before we get the sufficient data to know what we're dealing with. In the meantime, what do countries and governments need to do? We've seen, uh, you know, banning flights from these nine African countries here in Australia. Does it seem like the right thing to do to stick to more cautious COVID settings until we know what it is that we're facing? Well, I think one of the challenges is, a, you know, you ban certain countries, but it could well have spread outside of that country. We certainly have seen international travelers now identified with this variant in, in many countries. So Hong Kong, the Netherlands, um, Belgium, Australia, Germany, UK. So it may be in other countries. So by locking out just, you know, a certain number of places, you know, there may be people coming in with the variant from other, other countries. So I think we need to have a heightened uh, alert for any international travel. So in Australia, we had recently um, not required any quarantine at all, uh, but now I think there's going to be, you know, a, a few days of isolation until negative tests come back in, come back for international travelers. So being more cautious mm -hmm. about that, but also remembering we do have tools that affect any variant of COVID. So the non-pharmacologic intervention, so mask wearing, making sure your ventilation is good, not not. You know, meeting up with people in stuffy places where you're just rebreathing their air, mm -hmm. uh, and um, in social isolation. So, so these are the physical physical isolation. So these are the things that we know work on any variant of COVID. So, if you are concerned, then those are steps you can take and are safe steps in any setting. Nancy, um, you just mentioned boosters and how boosters can potentially make the impact uh, stronger of the current crop of vaccines. Christian Land Lindmeyer, uh, the who spokesman was on Bloomberg television on Friday and he very specifically said it is wrong for developed countries with such a high rate of vaccination to urge boosters at a time when those vaccines those shots are needed for the people like the people Heidi just mentioned in Africa who are so under vaccinated how do you square those two points well I, I would say that we can do both um, I don't see why there's a, why we can't do both. I mean, we have many countries that are at the current time oversupplied with vaccine and wasting vaccine. So it makes sense to use those vaccines to boost their population versus throwing them in the garbage. They're not going to people in need of, of the vaccine in other countries. They're actually being thrown in the garbage. So, you know, I think you can think of it in a binary way, like either we... we um, focus on globally, you know, low income countries and vaccinate them and we don't boost high income countries. But I think what we need to do is we need to increase production so that we we can vaccinate everybody. And certainly high income countries need to take a much more active role in that, undoubtedly. But I, I don't see this in a binary way. It's not either or. It needs to be both.